Hello everyone and welcome to this video and welcome to my channel if you have not watched any of my videos before. I'm Shelby, obviously, and this video is this video has been a long time in the making. And I say that because over a year ago now, I think of over a year ago now, um, I uploaded my first time listening to After Hours by the weekend. And that was the first album in its entirety I'd ever listened to by the weekend. And from there, I went through the whole library of the weekend. I have listened to Every album, all the mixtapes and trilogy, I broke it up and all of it is on my YouTube channel. I'll leave links in the description for all of those videos instead of cards since there are quite a few. A couple months ago, I posted my last album reaction to The weekend, and that was My Dear Melancholy. And what I wanted to do and I knew that I was going to do after listening to all the albums was I wanted to create my top 10 songs by the weekend that I have been listening to the most. So I gave it some time after my last album upload because obviously I needed some time to keep listening to that album. But we are here and it is happening today. I am going to be sharing the 10 songs by the weekend that I have found myself listening to the most over the past year of me discovering his music. I should mention that these aren't ranked in order per se of like number 10 to one of my favorites. I found that to be quite challenging for me to do. This is instead just truly the handful of songs that I have been listening to a lot. Maybe in due time, as I continue to keep listening to the music, I can more easily create the top 10. But at this point, it's only been one year with all of this different music coming into my life at different points throughout the year that it felt more fair to just create the songs I have been listening to the most. So I want to keep on, uh, I want to keep you guys posted on where I'm at with my journey of listening to The weekend's music. And hopefully within this year, it kind of sounds like we might have another album by him. So I definitely wanted to get this video out there before that could potentially come along. So if you are at all interested in what I have been listening to by the weekend the most from the past year, then keep on watching this video. As I mentioned, I have 10 songs I'm going to list, and then I do have a few honorable mentions at the end because there were a few songs that I just couldn't let go, even though I knew I couldn't place them in the top 10. So we're going to start with Trilogy and work our way through of the songs uh, all the way to the most recent album. So let's start with Trilogy and these and both of the songs I have listened to a lot from Trilogy, I believe, are both from Mixtape 1, House of Balloons. And that is The Morning and also The Party and The After Party. I feel like context-wise, lyrically, those songs definitely are all about things that um, I wouldn't say I exactly relate to at all. But I just don't know what it is. I just love the whole overall production of both the morning and the party and the after party. I think what initially hooked me in on listening to the morning was definitely the guitar and like the fade in, fade out kind of effect synthesizer, whatever it may be. I just thought it created a very cool aura that really suits the lyrics of the song. Like it really suits it completely. From the moment I very first heard it, I was obsessed with it. And I have continued to listen to it because it is just so pleasing on my ears to listen to. And the party and the after party kind of has that same sort of chill vibe that I really enjoy. But I do love some of the surprising elements musically. There's like this boom, boom sound that's going on. And once again, I think the music matches the whole aura of the lyrics very, very well. And I do love that it's a longer one. I like that it is kind of a 
part one with a transition into part two. It's really hard for me to explain. I think it's just, I think the vibe is so cool and I enjoy singing along to them and just listening to them with my headphones all the time. According to my YouTube comments, Kissland is an album that obviously, I think if you're just a commercial listener of the weekend, you probably don't know any songs from there. But I personally think Kissland's great because it is definitely in its own world away from the rest of the weekend's albums. I think it is very cinematic. There's a lot of strings happening and it's gorgeous. But I do only have one song that made it into my top. 10, but I do have another song from this album that's in my honorable mention. But the song from Kiss Land, and I feel like this is probably no surprise because I feel like I've seen a lot of people enjoy this one, is Tears in the Rain. Tears in the Rain is gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Lyrically, stunning. Musically, absolutely phenomenal. I just really appreciate the vocals on Tears in the Rain as well because I definitely think that is one of his songs that is like the whole Michael Jackson inspired vocals. You can definitely tell as I continue with this list, there are a lot of songs in the weekend's library of music that I think are very, very much so inspired by Michael Jackson, whether it's the beat or his style of singing. We'll talk about that more with some other songs. But Tears in the Rain is just gorgeous, and I think it's an absolutely beautiful um, closer for the album as well. And I think, too, it's just such a – the whole album is such a far cry. Like, it's so different from Trilogy. And I think that's what I love about Kissland so much as a whole is that it really – kind of showed the diversity that The weekend could provide as an artist since it did provide like a very different musical sort of vibe from what was happening on Trilogy. So I do really enjoy Tears in the Rain. Next after Kissland, we have Beauty Behind the Madness, which was a very obvious leap into mainstream for The weekend. I think the for original fans of the weekend that heard trilogy and kiss land i could see beauty behind the madness being a little jarring because unlike those first two albums or mixtape for trilogy this one does not have like that coherent theme this one definitely is like each song is its own thing start and stop he was collaborating with a lot of different artists i mean there's a song with ed sheeran on there but With that being said, with Beauty Behind the Madness, I have, is it only one song? No, 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 it's two songs. So I have two songs in my top 10 from Beauty Behind the Madness, and one is actually a single. It's a very popular single, and I don't think I gave it proper attention when it first came out, and I was hearing it all the time, but now we're a few years down the road, listening to it again with a different lens of not just, oh, this is a song I've heard on the radio. I'm obsessed with it now, and that's In the Night. I think what I love about In the Night is it's a fabulous workout song, but now that I've listened to the weekend's music, it never hit me before really listening to his music how Michael Jackson inspired that song is. It is so upbeat and his vocals are incredible. But what I love too is that in the past, I never paid attention to the lyrics. I just was like, oh, it's a fast tempoed song by The Weeknd. It's very popular, but it is so depressing lyrically. And I am a big fan of having those sorts of like contrasting themes where you have this very peppy, almost deceiving just how peppy and how like his vocals sound the song is musically. It's so deceptive because the lyrics are really heartbreaking and it's a storytelling song and I love a good storytelling song. It is a song, he is singing this song about another woman's life and things that she has experienced and him seeing her through his eyes. I love the lyrics, the whole storytelling of this girl's life through his eyes and her life experiences with that upbeat melody. 
I just really enjoy the concept and have so much more appreciation for that song than I ever did when it first came out and I wasn't like thoroughly paying attention to it. And the Michael Jackson inspiration, very obvious on that. And the second song from Beauty Behind the Madness I really enjoy is one that I would say is a super, super one-off for the weekend because it sounds like nothing else in his catalog, and that is Angel. It is the closer on the album, and it quite literally blew me away when I first heard it. If you reference my video, I'm pretty sure that was the song that I almost accidentally like kicked over my tripod because I literally just was not expecting the drama in the very beginning of it, I mean, it's very much so like a power ballad. It is a power ballad with guitars. And it is him just telling this woman, I hope you find somebody to love. But I just think that it's a very unique song in his catalog, which I think is why I like listening to it so much. And I love the ending too, with the different like chorus coming choruses, not like the chorus, but choirs, I guess, <laughs> coming in and singing. Um, yeah, I think that one just stands out because it just sounds musically very different. And I don't think he will ever make a song kind of like that again. I don't know. Okay. Now we're on to Starboy, which Starboy definitely, definitely had a very consistent theme musically. It was a stark difference from Beauty Behind the Madness. We went back into my albums are going to have a consistent sound. In comes Starboy. Two very successful singles came from this album with Daft Punk. And that kind of sets up the vibe for the whole album. I feel like some of his, I feel like some of the fans of The Weeknd appreciate Starboy. Some don't appreciate Starboy as much because of it sounding more radio friendly. But I have two songs from Starboy on here. Yeah, I have two songs from Starboy. No, three. I have three songs from Starboy. First, I'll talk about True Colors. I think True Colors, it's his vocals and lyrics on that one. I love singing along to it. The melody is very easy to sing along with. And I listen to it in the car driving all the time. And I love the calling back and forth that he does with himself vocally. And then I'm trying to do it myself while I'm singing along in the car. But I love when I get to hear a nice love song from the weekend, not necessarily a heartbreak song, but just like, show me your true colors. Like he wants to get to know a woman on a deeper level. And I really enjoy that because that's not a theme that happens as often in his music, but I really think it is the melody and his vocals that have made that song just not get skipped whenever it pops up. And I definitely like to listen to it. Love to Lay is another song from Starboy that I just really enjoy the beat. I really love the beat on that. Was it, was it a single? I feel like it could have been a single if it wasn't. I mean, it definitely has that feeling of being able to be like radio friendly, popular play, but maybe that's why I enjoy it so much because I don't think I have, have heard it as a single, even if it was. It definitely wasn't like Starboy or I Feel It Coming, like the other singles from that album in popularity wise. It's just a very, it's a very easy song for me to listen to and I enjoy. That's, a, that's about as deep as it gets with that one. Starboy is all about the catchy ones for me. Like there's some really, really catchy grooves in Starboy. And that leads me to my last one from Starboy, A Lonely Night. I do love that one. It definitely has the Michael Jackson vibe again. Like I can sense it in his ad libs and in his style of singing. He's channeling his inner MJ on A Lonely Night. And I feel like A Lonely Night is kind of like in my eyes the in the night from beauty behind the madness is kind of got the same mj styling vocal and music vibes and tempo as a lonely night those are like two that i kind of put together and like they make sense and i can sense the inspiration in those songs in my personal opinion i mean these 
clearly these are all just my personal opinions. All but. right, now we're on to my dear melancholy, which is so beautifully heartbreaking. And the song I like a lot from that is Hurt You. All of the falsetto in his singing, I think, is really gorgeous and hurt you. And it still just has a very kind of contained beat to it. So it lets you really just embrace his vocals and the emotion in his voice and all of the lyrics. It's just, I mean, everything about My Dear Melancholy is gorgeous lyrically. It definitely was the weekend opening up his heart and letting his true feelings out in his music. So I enjoyed all of it for that reason, but Hurt You is the one that I have just found myself listening to the most. Finally, After Hours. The two songs I like most from After Hours are actually both songs that have been released as singles. After Hours in general is a fantastic album. But, and I, and this is weird for me because normally when I listen to full albums of artists, songs that I am most drawn to aren't necessarily the singles. More often than not, they are not the singles. So the fact that two singles from After Hours are ones that I really do find myself listening to the most, I don't know what that says about me or if it just says that that's just how good of an album After Hours after hours is is that all of it is so good and that even the singles like just blend in so well with the rest of the album so the first one in your eyes i have loved it from the moment i very first heard it i first heard in your eyes while listening to after hours in my video album reaction i had not heard it as a single i didn't know it was ever a single at that point because at that point all i really heard was blinding lights that's it so in your eyes is definitely so 80s inspired and i love the lyrics of it. I love singing along to it. It makes sense that it's a single. It's very radio friendly. And what really pushed it over the top for me, I was just like, this is so 80s. And I am in love with the melody. I'm in love with the beat. I'm in love with the production. I love the lyrics and how easy it is to sing along to it. And then we added the saxophone solo. Amazing, amazing. Once I heard that saxophone solo come in, the first time I heard that song, I knew in that moment, I'm like, check mark, this song can stay and I'm going to listen to it for a very long time. I love having that very retro inspired, smooth saxophone in the song. Absolutely amazing. I couldn't have planned it better myself. Like it felt right and I was hoping he'd go there and then he did. Amazing. Okay, and then the last the last song that I really enjoy from After Hours goes back to it is not a song that I can personally relate to at all lyrically. It is heartless. That's probably going to surprise some people, but I really just love Heartless. It's so abrasive and aggressive. I love how upfront the lyrics immediately are. It makes me laugh, but I love it. And the music with it, it's it literally sounds like the music is punching you. It's like, pow, pow. Like, I love that. It just matches up so well. I love the attitude with it and how it's darker. But it literally feels like the music is punching you. Like, that's the best way to describe it. And that's exactly what it should be doing. Like, the whole song is him talking about how heartless he is. And I love a good mood music. I love when songs can just get you in a certain zone. And that song has the power to just make you feel like you can conquer anything. And that's probably why I love it. I will, if I've had a rough day, I will literally blast that song in the car and sing along to it. <laughs> and I just, I need, to, like, it just helps me. It's very therapeutic and I really enjoy it for that reason. <laughs> now here are my four 
honorable mentions of songs that I've also listened to a decent amount, and that is As You Are from Beauty Behind the Madness, Professional, which is the opener for Kissland, House of Balloons, Glass Table Girls. I feel like that's a very iconic song for OG fans of the weekend, and I really do listen to that one a fair amount too. And then finally, the one that most people know from my dear melancholy, Call Out My Name. It is gorgeous, and I do love the acapella version a lot. Acapella or the regular version doesn't matter. I love them both so much. There it is in all of its glory. Those are the songs that I have had in my rotation the most from the weekend after discovering all of his music. I think what's crazy is that it's literally been a year since I've heard After Hours for the first time, and then a year from a year ago to now, it has taken me to discover all of his albums and. I do think that what I listen to the most will change. I mean, that happens over time as you keep listening to songs over and over. So I am curious to see as time goes on if these are the songs that remain the most, if I incorporate new songs or what ends up happening. I would love to know in the comments what maybe your top 10 most played songs are by the weekend. The weekend has a lot of songs, so I feel like we're going to get all sorts of different top 10 lists, and that's a beautiful thing. I think that is amazing, so I'd love to see what everyone else is liking to listen to by the weekend in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thank you for watching, especially if you made it until the very end of the video. And until next time, bye.